how about if we use AI to model in Rhino with simple prompts? I will now demonstrate how that works. Hi, uh, a while ago I explained how I see the future of computational design. I simplified basically any software into three layers. The database, where we save our objects, the CRUD layer, where we create, read, update, and delete our objects using a bunch of functions that the developers of that particular software, uh, software gave us. And then we have the user interface that we use to uh, invoke those functions. My prediction is that this CRUD layer will be replaced by an AI brain and that the user interface will look completely different. No buttons or icons that call specific functions, but instead a system of prompts that tell the AI brain what to do. If you follow this channel, you heard me say something along the lines of uh, talk is cheap or I don't just like to talk the talk, but I also like to walk the walk. So along the, those lines, I'm going to now demonstrate how what I explained works. I will use my own gas plugin for a Rhino that is in development. If you want to get your hands on the early free uh, versions, register on the gasworld.com and you will get access to my completely free 10 plus hour Rhino developer C Sharp course. That being said, the gas plugin is completely work in progress. So whatever user interface you see right now is just a working version. So do not let that uh, distract you. Now, GAS has a system of agents, uh, and the agents we are going to use today uh, I call Chatty, and we will tell Chatty to generate different uh, geometry for us. But now, the most important thing, I will repeat this. This is not the so-called function calling that I showed maybe like a year ago, because in my first attempts I had prepared functions that the uh, AI model would find and call. Here, I do not have any functions pre-made, nothing prepared. Uh, nothing that Chatty can choose from or combine. Chatty will listen to my prompt and then generate code on the fly and then run it all automatically, seamlessly. I will also show you how this splitting into code generation and then running that code uh, works. Some call this vibe coding where you start coding with prompts and let's see, maybe soon we will have a grasshopper type of interface where we just combine different prompts and model in that way. Uh, but let's not, not get ahead of ourselves and start with simple examples. Let's go. So now I will demonstrate how this chatty bot works. I'll open the uh, new Rhino file and we have only this one agent, the chatty bot, and then uh, I will demonstrate a couple of prompts that I pre-prepared. Uh, and then I will show you how it works under the hood. So we'll start with simple prompts. And I remind you, there is no prepared functions. Everything is created by AI on the fly and executed. So create a line from point 0, 0, 0 to point 0.555. Let's see what it does. Okay, it created a line from us, right? So as you imagine, now we can change the coordinates. Let's say 555 five, five, to 15, 10, 5. It created another line for us and we can now continue drawing this line, right? But that's not so interesting. Let's create a circle with the center at 555 and radius of 10. Okay, here is our circle. That's nice. And now let's start to get even more creative. Uh, let's start by creating a box with the size of 10, 20 and 42. So now it created the box, right? Let's see. Um, Let's see if we have one side is 10, one side is 20, one side is 42. Uh, now I have to admit this won't always work. There sometimes it says error and then I have to repeat, but I will show you that each of these commands generates a script that I can actually change by hand here if there are some uh, small errors. But let's uh, not let's ignore that for now to see what else uh, we can do in this first draft. Let's uh, try this prompt. This one says create an array of 100 lines of length 100 parallel to the y-axis at a distance of 100 to each other. Okay, it seems like it did create those lines. Here they are. 100 curves and we can even check the length. It says 100 millimeters. You notice that I'm not talking about units here. It works in whatever units this current document is. Uh, let's get even more creative. Now let's create 100 boxes in a, uh, a X, Y grid. You see that you don't even know, uh, really need to know uh, English properly. 
or spelling, but let's say it's an N. Create 100 boxes in N XY grid separated from each other by 100 units, each with a width and length of 20 units, but random height between 10 and 100. So let's see. What we want is to see is 100 boxes in a grid that have random height and some specific uh, um, length and width. And here we are. It generated it from us. We can uh, measure the distance. The distance is 100 between them. We can see that the height is random and that the width and length of boxes is actually 20. So it did ask what we wanted to. And as I said, here is the script it generated. It's not that complicated. And it executed automatically. This is the why I have two different buttons. This one will just create the script and then I can uh, manually change it if there is errors or if I want to add something and then execute it here. And uh, this button, the white one, does what we see. It doesn't even ask me or show me anything. It just simply uh, creates a function and generates it on the fly. So let's move this a little bit to the side and let's create something similar. Uh, I prepared a prompt that says this. Draw 100 spheres in space between 0 and 100 in all three axes. You see, it's not even properly defined, like language-wise, but I think it will understand. And the spheres should have random radii, let's say from 1 to 5 units. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it created the spheres. If we find the spheres a little bit small, we can say do the radii from 5 to 10. Okay, I guess it won't recognize here. It gave me an error because I uh, did uh, not write 10 well. Let's try that again. And now it did it properly. Okay, let's move this and let's try just one more. It says uh, create a grid of 50 lines in X and 50 lines in one Y direction and the distance between the lines is 20 in the x direction and 10 in the y direction. So let's see what it does. It, fit, it creates a normal architectural grid, let's say. Okay, it did create a grid. Let's see. Our lines are there. The distance is 20 in the x direction and 10 in the uh, uh, y direction. Okay, so I think this is enough to demonstrate that these things uh, as I told you how they work under the hood, they don't need any kind of prepared functions. Chattybot creates these functions on the fly and then executes them. I can sub, uh, supplement stuff here, I can change it and so on, but I think this would be enough to demonstrate how this system works that I tried to explain where we will have just a database and then the AI brain will create uh, functions on the fly and execute them and a user interface will not be icons and uh, like this and tabs but it will be a system of prompts that's what i believe at least okay so what you have seen is something that i think is kind of a preview of uh, how the future modeling will work the most important thing here is that the, the prompts are not here to create pixels uh, images or text uh, they are here to create geometry how by having text to rules or text to functions or text to algorithms, call, call it however you want, but we will use prompts to create the algorithms that then be, can be run and create geometry for us. And when we start combining those, that we, then we can start uh, to get uh, into the area of computational design that's done purely with prompts, but we will see a lot uh, more of that in the future. So if you want to uh, follow that <laughs> road, and uh, the development of the guest software, have access to the Rhino developer courses, C-sharp courses, C-sharp videos, all of that. Subscribe, uh, follow my channel, follow me on LinkedIn, uh, and go to gasworld.com and register there for, uh, for all of these things. And I'll see you soon. Stay free.